boo it's Katie. So happy Halloween. These are my Halloween makes for this year. So I've gone a little bit away from wire, not entirely away from my seed beading, but I'm moving into another one of my passions, which is seed bead embroidery. So these are all brooches. So as you can see, we've got the brooch pin on the back there. They're all backed really nicely. So I'm going to go through that as well. That is probably going to be a separate video because it might go on a little bit too long. So we've got um, a ghost, a pumpkin and a bat. So we're going to work on the bat. As you can see, I've not quite finished this one yet. So we're going to work on this as we work through. But what I just want to talk about is getting a little bit of depth to your your piece when we're seed bead embroidery i'm really going through the bare basics of seed bead embroidery today with you so it is just about adding beads in a very very simple way but what i'm going to do is show you how i've worked the design just by changing the color a little bit and that lining out so we've still got orange beads all the way across here but i've used a slightly different orange to get that texture and the way that i've um beaded these in this in this kind of ovalness it kind of gives it like a little bit of fullness so it creates a slightly 3d look we know it's not 3d it's perfectly flat but it gives you a little bit of an impression that it's a bit like a plump pumpkin so and then with the ghost so he's kind of going oh what i've done is this might be a bit harder to tell on camera but if i turn it on its side what I've done is I've used a pearly white for the main part of the ghost and then I've used a matte. So let's see if we can pick that up there. So you can see as, as these um, undulations come across here, I've used a matte white just to kind of give it a little bit more of a ghostly look. I'm hoping that comes through okay in the camera, you can see a little bit more there. And just to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth to it okay and that one is also backed with this beautiful ultra suede material so the piece that we're going to be working on today is the bat so i'm going to go through my whole design process what what i do to create a design for cbd embroidery and how i go about putting everything together everything sort of before you even start beading and then how i go about creating the design and which which parts i do first etc and then um, in a separate video, like I've just said, I'm going to show you how to do the backing and also how to add a brooch pin. OK, so I'm just going to move these two guys out of the way. And we're going to move on to this one. So this is the one we're going to make. Obviously, I've already beaded all this part in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I got the shape and um, show you where I start and everything. So. What I tend to do is I'll go onto a search engine and search for images and I search for line drawings. That's that's the key word to use, line drawings and such. OK, make sure whatever images you you obtain are um, royalty free. They're co not copyrighted or anything. Make sure they're free to use. Um, this one I've drawn myself anyway. So and then I've scaled them. I've just used the computer to scale them down to the size that I want. So this one is about two and a half inches across. Uh, this one's probably just under that. Yeah, it's probably around about two and a half inches if you went to the widest, widest point. And this one I didn't measure. So let's just have a quick measure of this. <clears throat> so let's go for the widest, widest point. This is about four and a half inches, okay? So that's from tip to tip, okay? So just be aware that when you um, use images off the internet, they're usually kind of A4 size, so you might have to scale them down. Like I said, this one, I just drew it. I just literally folded the paper in half, drew my shape, then open, cut it out and opened it up nice and easy. So once you've got your template designed, the size that you want and cut out, then you're going to look at using some beading foundation. So this is a piece of beading foundation. They usually come in A4 sizes, or you can sometimes get them in smaller sizes. You can get them in black and white, possibly other colours as well. And what we need to do is cut it out. So find, obviously this one has been used. Um, find the, the best place to cut this out. So what I would do is I would, if you're using one that's been used before, I would go that way around. And what you can do is you can either pop a pin in it or you can just hold it and cut it out. I would suggest if you've not done it before, just popping a, just a normal darning pin in there and then just cut it around, cut it all the way around. The other thing you can do, which is sometimes a little bit difficult when you're using the black, 
because uh, this does come in white as well, you can use something like a metallic pen and actually draw around it and then you can just cut out the shape which is a lot easier. But a metallic pen will show up on the black beading foundation. So once you've got to that stage, you will have your cutout template ready to start beading. Now the one thing you must do before you actually start beading on it is actually cut out your template for your backing as well. Especially if you're going to use kind of, because sometimes it's easy to pop that on top because it's just a little bit more thicker sort of thing. So either use this on top of there and do the exact same thing that we've just done with the beading foundation or you can go back to this but it's better to have both done at the same time and then you know that you're ready to start adding the backing as soon as you finish beading. Okay so now we're ready to start beading so what you need in front of you is your pre-cut out um, beading foundation template. Just move your, um, your backing to one side for a minute make sure you don't lose that. Um, you need a needle so I find the best size needle to use for my sea bead embroidery is a size 12 beading needle. So these are a beadle on size 12 beading needle that I'm using today. And I'm using my thread, which is the, the black satin uh, fireline thread. I bought mine from Jewelry Maker UK. So, and that is a six pound fireline. So I would say you, didn't, you don't need any more than a six pound. You want something that's quite light, quite fluid when you're using it. You can use higher, higher weight if you want to, um, but it, it just makes life easier if you're using a nice fine needle and a nice fine thread. Now the length of thread you, you choose to take is entirely up to you. Just use what you can manage because it doesn't matter how many times you add thread. This is the absolute beauty of seabed embroidery. All the workings, all the thread, all the, any changing of thread, any attachments, any changing of direction is all hidden. Everything's hidden on the back. So I'm just gonna show you the back of this, this piece. So you should be able to see there all those threads crossing, crossing, crossing over. And it doesn't matter because it's all gonna get covered up. So don't worry if you're not somebody who, who thinks of themselves as something somebody that's able to sew, it really doesn't matter. If you can do a basic stab stitch, you can do this. It, it will be absolutely fine. Now, the seed beads that I've got in front of me, I'm using, which is just a little highlight for the ear section. So I'm using some galvanized silver, and these are all Mayuki seed beads. And for the black, I'm using black my UQC bees. These are all size 11s. I will pop the details of these down below. And then for this one, so with this, I've used this as kind of the highlight so you can see it. So it's still a dark colour, but we've got that slight metallicness to it. It gives you a little bit more depth. And this is the metallic dark blue iris, also my UQ. Okay, so the place to start. I tend to think start at the center and then we'll work out what we want is because we've got a symmetrical shape we want a symmetrical design and that is one of the hardest things to do so what the first thing you need to do is just put a really simple can you just see that there a simple knot at the end of your thread just leave, leave it an inch or so simple knot double knot if you want to and that's all, all we need to do there's nothing complicated about this so because I'm wanting to start right at the edge and I don't want that knot right at the edge, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the middle there. I'm just going to add a stitch in there. It doesn't matter. Nobody's ever going to see this stitch. So I'm just going to come through just a few millimetres away from that, just so that my thread is in the middle here and then it's, it's just out of the way for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through right on this corner. So I'm just stab stitching through right on this corner so we've got this these two little corners here and we're going to use our thread as a guide okay so we're going to be adding a few beads at a time six or seven beads at a time for, for these for long stretches and what we're going to do is we're going to use our thread as a guide so i'm going to show you how we do that so i'm going to be using the metallic color and what i tend to do is i tend to get little piles of beads when i'm doing this because we don't we don't want to be messing about counting beads and we want seven or eight beads six or seven six seven eight beads on there now i know that i want this line of beads which is this line here that's going to go around the top of the wing i know i want it to come up to this point here so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take my thread i'm going to push my beads right down to that bottom corner and i'm going to take my thread up 
to where I want it to go, okay? So my thread is in the exact place where I want it to be and I'm gonna push them beads down, just use the needle just to push those down and then I'm just gonna push my needle through exactly at the very top of that little row of beads I've just popped on. And I know I'm in the, the exact same, the right place that I want it to be, okay? So I've added those few beads there. Now what I want to do is I wanna come back. So I'm gonna bring my thread from the back and I wanna come back a few beads. So I'm gonna bring my thread and what you'll find is if I just bring that up, if you see those beads move a little bit, you're in exactly the right place because you, what you want is to be in the middle there. So I've brought my thread back up through to the front in the middle of that little section of beads that I've just added. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come through those beads. So I've just come through the last four beads. So I've added eight, gone back through to the back and then come back through. And what that is gonna do is gonna put a little stitch in the back there and that's gonna hold that little section in. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. So adding some beads, let's get them on your needle. Always let them drop down, don't guess where it's going to be. Let those drop down. Using my thread as a guide, so I've brought my thread up to the point where I know I'm gonna want this, this to come to. Pushing my beads down with my needle and then I'm gonna push through exactly where I want my, my thread to go. So I push through, pull through at the back, and then I'm gonna come back around about four beads again. And remember, if the beads move, can you see that's, that's just moved a little bit, just there, that means I'm in the right place because I've come through in the middle of those, but the back of those beads. And I'm gonna come through the last four. Don't worry if you've gone a, a little bit further down, come through five, as long as we're just adding a little stitch somewhere in the middle, okay? And we'll get a nice straight line. So let's just keep adding these until we get to the top. So add a few more. Let them drop down. Use our thread as a guide. So we get that nice straight line, just give them a little push, make sure they're all together and through. And then we can just come through a few beads down. So it's kind of like a back stitch, I suppose you would call it. And then we're gonna come through those beads. And then when we've come through those beads, our needle is exiting at the end of those beads. So we're in the perfect position to just add more beads. So it gives you that nice continue, con continuous look so it doesn't it looks like you've just laid beads across it rather than you've actually just put lots of stitches in okay so just add some more you see they just moved out of the way a little bit that shows you're in the right spot if you think you've come through in the wrong spot just before you pull the thread through just take your needle back and go back again now i'm going to add about five or six then i'm going to look at where this falls on that car on that corner because I know we've been going up to that corner, but what I want is to come around that corner. So I can see that's just gonna come past that corner a little bit. Let's just pull that in a little bit. So it's just gonna come past that corner a little bit and I want to sweep it around the wing. So I'm just holding the thread where I want it to go, pushing it down. You can see I've just got that slight bend to it and that's where I'm gonna put my needle through. So I've just, swooshed around the corner just that little bit Now, when you are working with things that have got wings and things they tend to catch a lot so just uh, be careful you don't catch any threads on your corners now I want that to smooth around nicely I do want it to come right up to this corner so I'm going to bring my needle through on that corner like so we see that there and pull through and what that's going to do is tag that in the right shape for me so I'm kind of just tagged in exactly where I want it to go and now I'm proceeding through those last few beads again. So and just pull through. There we go. So you can see it's going to swoosh around that corner. So I'm just going to continue adding beads until I get to here and then I'm going to show you a little trick just to smooth things out a little bit too. 
So when you get to this stage and you've come all the way and you've swept all the way around this corner, there's a little trick just to smooth that out even more. So I've just gone back and come through the last few beads, like so. So my thread is exiting the beads. Now what I want to do is actually go through to the back, so right on that tip, I'm just gonna go through to the back and then I'm gonna come back through. I know that seems a little bit silly, but if I just went back, I'd be taking that thread back through the beads. So I've just caught it, kind of tagged it into that edge. Now, any straight lines that you make or curved lines, if you just want to smooth them out, what you need to do is go back all the way through. So the whole line every time. OK, so all of my long lines, I tend to take my thread all the way back through and it will give you a slightly better finish. Um, like I say, a smoother finish. Just make sure you don't miss any beads out and just come back through all those beads and what that will do, especially if you're wanting a very perfect straight line. Um, the more times you run a piece of thread in one continuous piece through it, the more, the, the kind of straighter it's going to be, the smoother the look is going to be and it will smooth out any little stitches that might be slightly off. So, and then if you are doing something that needs absolute precision, this doesn't need it so much, but if you need anything that um, needs absolute precision, what I do is I go back and forwards through again that and then go all the way to the top again and it will really, really smooth that out. Okay, so let's take a look at that wing detail again now. So every time you do, sorry, I'll just say, but every time you do something on this side, what you want to do is follow it and do it on this side. So do everything in tandem and then you will get a more even look. I'm just working on one side because um, it would go on for a very long video because it is quite time consuming. So what I've done is I've just I've popped a little stitch in about here just so that I can come across to here because my thread was at the end. So if I put a piece of thread straight across, it would, um, it would be on the outside there. So I've just popped a little stitch inside and my thread I've just brought up through at the end of this little point here. Now, as you can see, I've gone with this design. I know that's not probably anatomically correct, but this is just a kind of an, an image of a bat. It's not anatomically correct before anybody comments below. But um, So what I want to do is bring everything back to kind of one point here from each of these points on the wing. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend you only do four, maybe five beads per per sweep because you want to be able to get that little bit of shape into it. So this one, I'm going to go slightly up. So it's up to you how you do it. So I'm going to go slightly up and then bring it rounded slightly. So again, I'm moving my thread where I want it to be. So you can see I've just popped my thread over there and this is where I want it to be going push my beads up and again pop through and it's the exact same stitch so don't worry I'm not going to be going through every little section a lot of it is all the same but I will show you I will pop a still image of my design on here for you so that you can uh, copy it if you want to do and then we're going to add a few more beads like I say three or four or five at the most when we're adding like a curve design so I want to bring that more in so you can see that curve's coming around there. And I've pushed that in and I can push my needle through. And I can see I can just fit one more bead in there. So still I'm going to come back a couple of beads, back a couple of beads through those last two beads. And then I can pick up a single bead. So I've got a little gap there just to fill in and pick up a single in fact I probably get two in there pick up two beads and then come back through okay now I would say it is better to start from the point coming to here rather than trying to start from here and get to the point you it's more of a guide because now we've got two points okay but if we're trying to go this way we might end up sort of having a bit of a wiggly line okay so you will end up with yours like this okay so around and around and around and then you're going to copy the same at the opposite side so once you've got to that point and you've got all your lines in so you will basically have everything 
uh, as you see here, but you will have all of your metallic beads in. You won't be using the metallic beads after that. So what you need to do then is start filling in spaces. So as you can see, I'm not going to do this for you because you can see how it's done. I've started at the edges. It's the exact same um, basic stitch that we've been doing. I've started at the edges, got that little bit of a curve in, and then just followed it, reducing the amount of beads all the way down. Okay, and you just fill in. There's no, there's no counting beads. Just pop in what fits. It's, it's as simple as that. Okay, for the inside of this part here, I've edged it all in black, and then I'm just going to put a little highlight in each corner for the ear. So I'm just going to go through that little bit there. So I'm going to bring my needle up at the very point inside the ear there. You can see that there. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three beads. So, one, two, three of the silver. I'm going to let those drop down in either direction. So, I'm just going to bring them down the side there and push them right up to, up into the corner. Okay. And then I can just do my usual stab stitch through. It's great working on a beading mat, especially if you've got a macrame board underneath it or something, because you can literally just stab through. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up, because it's only three beads, I don't need to do that midway stitch. I'm going to come back up in that corner again, okay? Because I'm going to borrow that first bead. So I'm just going to come through one of those silver beads, okay? So just one of those silver beads. Let me just pop that back in. So just one silver bead there. I'm going to come through that and just pull through just make sure we don't tag our thread anywhere see it's quite often it'll get stuck around a wing and if it's especially black on black you don't always see it so just be very mindful of that so we've got our three beads we've come back up to the top and come through that first bead and then i'm just going to add two beads two of our silver size 11 so i've borrowed i've used this kind of three in each direction Okay, so I've used the corner bead twice. So that's going to give us a little highlight on our ear. Okay, so now for the rest of it, all we've got to do is fill in. So filling in all the way along all these um, these wings. So like I said, start from the outer of the wing on that curve. Get that curve in with your black beads and fill in to the centre and go through each of those. And then the middle section, I'm just going to fill this in horizontally all the way down. OK, so I'm going to catch you back right at the end and I'll show you where I've got to there. And then I'm going to do a separate video on how to add the um, brooch pin and the backing. I'll see you in a few seconds. So this is the bat template. When I filled it in with the bead, you can see even though it's actually totally flat, just by changing the direction, changing the, the slight colour on these beads here, it does kind of bring it alive and makes it slightly more three-dimensional. So you can see it is perfectly flat. There's no sort of 3D-ness to it. But just by directionally, the way that you kind of use your beads, so that slight roundedness, so taking that right from the edge and then in, and the slightly different colour on the actual detail really, really makes a difference. So let's just have a look at the back all those workings don't worry about those whatsoever that's all going to get covered by our backing that we've already got here so i'm going to do the backing part in a separate video and show you how to back it and to add a um a brooch pin to it as well just like these ones here like so so i will be um adding the video as soon as possible after this one so here is the bat all finished, all the beadings done on it. Obviously, I've still got to attach this back, so I'm going to do that in a separate video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And here it is with its friends, the pumpkin and the, the ghost. Uh, I think you can see the texture that I've managed to get on these, the, the depth that I've managed to get on these without actually making it 3D whatsoever. So even if we pick the bat up and look at the bat, the bat it is still perfectly flat. Yet yeah, I've managed to use the beads just in really simple beading technique to um, create a, a, a three-dimensional look even though it's not actually 3D. So we'll be edging it in black just like these ones here. 
So we'll be continuing, continuing to use those black beads. And I'll also be showing you how to add the brooch pin so it's nice and secure and how to, to finish off all around the edge with a nice beaded edge like you can see there. So please be sure to subscribe if you've liked the video and subscribe as well if you want to see the follow up video which will be the backing. Thank you very much for watching today and happy Halloween.